Hi! In this video I'll show you how to adjust picture controls for accurate image on Hisense TVs from the 2025 lineup. The TV that I've used to analyze colors and picture processing is 55U8Q for the European market. For color and grayscale analysis I've used Portrait Display's Kalman software, G1 Pattern Generator and C6 HDR5000 color emitter. Let's start! Before we begin checking picture options, let's ensure that TV is working in home mode. To do that, grab your remote and I recommend you press the menu button, that's the button with three lines top left of the navigation and here you go to all settings. Now the first option is picture, but for now let's scroll to system and then advanced settings. By the way, if you go, you can also jump to uh, last option if you go up from the top and vice versa. So in advanced settings, scroll until you see usage mode. Make sure it is set to home mode. Great. Now that we've confirmed that TV is in home mode, let's choose the most accurate picture mode for given signal. This TV supports a wide range of signals, SDR and HDR, and you need to be displaying each of those to be able to choose the most accurate picture mode. The recommended picture modes on this TV for SDR are Cinema and Filmmaker mode, for HDR10 and HDR10+, HDR Cinema or again Filmmaker mode, and for Dolby Vision you need to choose Dolby Vision Dark. You will notice that for each signal types those modes are not selected by default. Actually TV comes in more attractive picture modes even though they're called standard or Dolby Vision IQ but actually these modes are made to exaggerate colors, contrast, sharpness and to make motion feeling and looking unnatural for 24p content. So if you want to see the original image the image that filmmakers intended you to see, then choose those recommended picture modes. Now related to gaming, in each of those picture modes you will see there is a game mode option, so you can get accurate colors as well as low input lag. The only exception of this rule is Dolby Vision where you will also have Dolby Vision game picture preset. Now let's see those picture options. I'll press menu button again and you can see in this menu you can already change picture mode right here but you need to press OK and confirm this energy efficiency notice every time you want to see different picture modes. So as mentioned HDR standard is the default preset but if you want more accurate image Filmmaker, IMAX Cinema or HDR Cinema are recommended. Let's use HDR Cinema for this demonstration. And then you need to go to all settings and again confirm this energy efficiency notice. You will see this often. So the same menu that I just showed is the first option. So here you can choose different picture modes. And then let's see which options are available. Picture mode settings. First option is apply picture settings. You can choose if you want to have same picture settings in this mode for all inputs, including streaming apps like Netflix or Disney Plus, or if you want to have individual settings for the current source. So if you're at HDMI 1 input, you can then adjust it in unique way compared to other modes. So you have this option as well. Backlight, overall brightness of the screen, for HDR signals it will be maxed out. But if you find the image too bright, you are free to reduce this value using the slider like this. Brightness is black level, contrast is white level. Usually these values are adjusted correctly by default, but there are specific test patterns which you can use to confirm if they are okay. Color saturation, this control affects saturation of all colors. Again, 
default value is OK. Sharpness for original sharpness of the image, keep it at zero. And then if you're watching some low resolution content, you can increase this value. Then going to advanced settings here again, we have additional options. Going to brightness menu, the first option you see is local dimming. If your TV supports it, if it doesn't, you simply won't see this option. There are different intensities. I would recommend low value because I noticed medium and high are hiding certain details, especially uh, in dark scenes. And off value will disable local dimming, so all the benefits which you have won't be visible. So definitely use local dimming, at least on low value, which anyway I recommend. Peak brightness for HDR signals, keep it at high. For SDR signals, it will be uh, at a lower value, but usually you don't need to touch it. AI brightness burst is function which will dynamically increase brightness of certain specular highlights, but I recommend to keep it turned off just for the consistency of the image. Now the TV also has light sensor and if you enable it right here, it will adjust the brightness of the image depending on room lighting conditions. Uh, as you can see, it already dimmed the image a bit. So uh, for maximum impact of HDR image, and if you want consistent brightness, I recommend to keep it turned off, but it's really up to you. If you prefer to have this uh, automatic control, then simply enable it right here. You can also adjust its intensity with light sensor shift. So if you're noticing TV is dimming the image too much, then you can uh, adjust this sensor shift a bit and find the optimum uh, performance for your needs. Adaptive contrast, it's a dynamic control which I recommend to be turned off. HDMI dynamic range, I recommend to keep it at auto. Dynamic tone mapping, so for content with static metadata like the one I'm currently sending, you will have this control. Generally, it leads to too bright image and there are no additional tweaks available, so I recommend that you keep it turned off. But if you are watching content in a very bright room and you want maximum brightness, then you can also use this control in that aspect. Dark detail, if you're having trouble seeing details in shadows, then this is the option which will elevate those dark details a bit so they're more easy to spot. Gamma adjustment, you see for this type of signal it's not available, but for example for SDR you can adjust it, so overall brightness of the image you can adjust with this control as well. And then if you have calibration equipment, there is a 20 point gamma uh, calibration available, so for each input level you can adjust gain. Now I cannot guarantee that all values will work correctly as I noticed during my calibration, but certainly control is here and if you have the equipment, you can use it in this menu. That's all related to brightness, let's jump to color. The first option is color temperature, it's set to warm one by default and since this is the most accurate value, I recommend that you keep it like that. Color gamut, keep it at auto unless you want specific color gamut. Here you can adjust the gamut you need. So keep it at auto, dynamic color enhancer, you have different intensities. Also for accurate image, keep it turned off. Color tuner, if you have calibration equipment, you can adjust hue, saturation and brightness for primary and secondary colors. White balance with calibration tools, you can do two point as well as 20 point adjustments. And same as for gamma, I cannot guarantee that everything will, will work properly, at least it didn't work on my unit, so be advised. And finally, low blue light option, 
it's present on many devices these days so if you want to reduce the amount of blue light you can do it right here otherwise keep it turned off and now let's move to clarity in this menu you have different options to reduce the noise of the image as well as compression artifacts or if you're noticing posterization this gradient control will help you with that as well super resolution option to artificially enhance sharpness of the image for original image especially if you're watching 4k native content keep it turned off under motion submenu you have motion interpolation under ultra smooth motion option here you have different options from disabled smooth standard clear film if you don't want to see soap opera effect or custom where you can manually adjust judder from 0 to 10 or if you just want to increase motion resolution without soap opera effect then you can max out blur reduction or adjust it as you see fit clear motion this is black frame insertion with three different options in my tests I haven't seen an improvement with this so I kept it turned off anyway it introduces flickering and reduces overall brightness so definitely more disadvantages than any real advantages and then high refresh rate mode which I kept turned off and haven't seen real benefit of it uh, because if you want to get 165 Hertz when you connect your PC then you need to enable it in other menu I'll show it right now it's under connection HDMI and CC under HDMI format you need to enable enhanced pro then you will get 4k at 165 Hertz or QHD or lower resolutions up to 288 Hertz which is important for PC gamers now we've seen all picture mode settings in addition you will have game settings so for gamers you can enable game mode right here or you can let the TV automatically switch to game mode once gaming signal is detected and here you can enable MD FreeSync Premium Pro and also this refresh rate option AI settings are under intelligent mode settings AI picture optimization which again is doing too much and I'm not seeing real benefit to use it content type auto detection when movie content is detected TV can switch automatically to filmmaker mode or IMAX mode for IMAX content and finally AI energy mode which will adjust brightness depending on environment so basically the same control as we've seen in the brightness sub menu and then finally aspect ratio you have different options right here movie zoom if you don't want to see black bars above and below the image or dot to dot for one to one pixel mapping but in general auto setting works fine so these were recommended picture settings for Hisense 2025 TVs as you've seen there are many picture controls available but you can do a lot by simply changing to those accurate picture presets for those with calibration equipment even though there are many picture controls I would say a standard list of picture controls available for calibration I've encountered issues with tweaking some of those either they were not working properly or the steps between one value to the other was too big so it was difficult to really fine-tune certain aspects like uh, white balance and with this we've come to the end of this video thanks for watching if you have some questions or doubts let me know in the comment section and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!